mean, um, yeah, that's another thing, but um, it's it's great. It's still great. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, um, God, and I love the influence that it has. Were you shocked when like Whoopi then was like let go for two? I think it was two weeks or suspended and all that. Yeah, stuff. I was like, but you know, I thought to myself, to me, it was, you know, it was everybody's got to be punished, you know, held responsible somehow for any slip ups, whatever. And I was like, oh my God, she could not have handled this with more class and grace. Like yeah. she came back, I learned something. I may, you know, she came back the way everybody should come back, but it's easy to, you know, it's easier said than done. I mean, you know, you're being, you're getting slapped on the wrist at, at, at an age where it's like, wait a minute, wait, what? But you also have a platform, you know, where your voice can be heard by so many people and you do have an influence. And so you do have that responsibility. She just handled that so freaking beautifully. I, I even wrote, wrote her, you know, I just uh, I shot her an email. I'm like, now that is how you come back from something. And what that's did she not, say to that? That's not, you know, nothing, you know, I mean, it wasn't, it was me. It was just as simple. Now that's how it's done. Yeah. Like to your point, like at a certain age and like in front of so many people that can't be easy. And then to like come back and just hold your head high and handle it so well. I, I totally agree. And said, you know, I understand things a little better now or whatever, you know, because I just say, always say, you know, this life is a classroom you know, and we got to be able to learn and fall and not think just because the age we are, we, you know, you know, uh, you know, I'm too big to fall or I'm too old to fall or, uh, you know, I'm not going to eat crow. I'm not going to, you know, and I, you know, just watching her do it. I just felt like, wow, you just taught a lot of people how you deal with something like this. Yeah. What about, I know you said on Watch What Happens, like Debbie Reynolds may not have been happy with some of your impressions of her. It sounds like Barbara approved. Was there anyone else like you heard from that was like, thumbs up, we love, we love what you're doing with us? Judge Judy called my manager and said, you tell your client that I said she's almost got me. You know, and she was a doll. I met her at some event in New York and she came up to me and she was so cool. And she goes, uh, can I give my son your number? And I'm like, I'm not gonna say no. Um, I'm like, Judy, I, I don't know. I'm like, listen, if it didn't work out, you're the last person I wanna you know, piss off. And she goes, nah, I'm not like that. You, you, you know, it, it, it'll be okay. She was so cool. And then one time I saw her at a department in a department store. And she was so cool. And she goes to me, what are you looking for? And I go, ah, oh, a handbag. And she goes, let me look with you. <laughs> and I go, and I'm like, you know, I can't just shop with Judge Judy. I'm just, I was like nervous the whole time. And I just like, let's just pick anything out so this can be over with because I'm, you know, nervous. And I go, oh, that, that bag is pretty. She goes, that's gorgeous. You're getting it. It goes to the, it goes to, up to the salesperson. She, she says, we're get, getting that bag right there. It goes up to the salesperson. Okay. I'm not on SNL that long. They go, that's a thousand dollars. I go, sweet baby Jesus. And she didn't blink an eye. And I'm just like, oh my, what did, shake, shake, shake. I don't think I ever spent more than maybe $200 on a handbag, you know, or something like that. And I go, and I had no choice. So I gave him my credit card and I was just like, and it was a Bottega Veneta bag. And I remember going to SNL with the bag, going back and Tom Brooker was our wardrobe guy. And he goes like this to me, is that Bottega Veneta? And I go, uh-huh. 
Like he looked at me like, wow, you have good taste. I go, no, Judge Judy made me buy it. <laughs> but after a while, I'm like, I'm not gonna say that anymore. Yeah, I bought a Bottega Veneta bag for a thousand dollars. All because you just didn't want to say, wait, I can't do this. Like Judge Judy was there. Like, I just, I have no choice. I have to. Yeah, she went up to the counter with me. She's getting this bag. She is so beautiful, cool. And I still love watching her show. I love seeing her put people in there. You know, like sometimes you just don't get justice in life. And I watch that and I just, a little part of me gets fulfilled. You know what I mean? Yeah, go ahead. You give it, you know. You, you fix their wagon. And then one time, I didn't know where years goes by and she's getting her uh, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And she calls me at home, Cherry, I would like you to be there. This is years later. And I was like, what? And I remember I went and the guy who, you know, she's up at the microphone, the podium, the guy, Johnny Grant, he's like this Hollywood guy that's always been you know, with the introducing the people who get their stars. And he goes, oh, we've got a lot of celebrities out to support her. And he's just naming all these famous people. And she, and like he's done, and then she leans in and Sherry O'Teary is here. I'm like, this fucking chick is the coolest, badass. I mean, it was amazing. It was, she's just everything, you know? So that was a wonderful, and then she came on to do the show. And I said to her, I go, Judy, can you please come on and bust me as you? And she goes, Sherry, you don't know. I can't act, I can only be myself. And I said, well then act like yourself. And I go, it'll be quick. You come on and you kick me off the bench. And you just say, Sherry, get your, and who did those eyebrows, whatever. And she did it. And she was so nervous and scared. And uh, I felt like saying, how does it feel, huh? <laughs> and, uh, but she did it great. And it was such a treat for everybody to have her come on and, you know. A, I can't imagine Judge Judy scared of anything. And B, did she ever fix you up with her son? Uh-huh. I mean, and it was, we went out like a few times, but I remember I never even saw him before anything knock, knock, knock at my door. And I was like, oh, wow, he's good looking. You know, and we went out like a couple times, but then I was going to LA for the summer and, you know, he was in New York and it was kind of like, it, you know, it just kind of let go and it was great. You know what I mean? It, it couldn't have ended any better. Um, and, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Judge Judy could have been your mother-in-law, Sherry. I know, right? <laughs> then, you know, then, I mean, I would just say, hang up this podcast, go retire, go move to some <laughs> island. It, it's going to be all over for you there. <laughs> what about, like, you've been on Watch What Happens so many times. Like, are you like a true self-admitted 